Hey toy fans, I'm D21Beast and welcome back to my figure review series here on my YouTube channel. And today we're once again looking at those Marvel Legends Infinite Series figures released by Hasbro. Before you we've got Ant-Man, released in 2015 to coincide with the movie of the same name. Now at the time of this review I haven't seen the movie yet but I do look forward to it and I was especially excited to get another Marvel Cinematic Universe figure added to my collection. But before we check this new figure out, what say we take a look at the packaging for this figure? As you come down the front of this box, you do have the Build-A-Figure Ultron logo in the upper left. You've got the movie logo for Marvel's Ant-Man there in the center. You then have a window box packaging that does house this Ant-Man figure inside as well as his various accessories and Build-A-Figure piece. Then towards the bottom, you've got the Marvel Legends Infinite Series logo and finally the figure's name, Ant-Man. And as we flip this package around, in the upper left hand corner you have the Marvel Legends logo and then the Ant-Man logo in the upper right. You've got a bio for Ant-Man below that, go ahead and pause now to read that. Coming down the package, you do have an image of Ant-Man out of the box, and then you have the logo for the Build-A-Figure Ultron wave, and then finally, at the bottom, you have a complete lineup of all the figures available in this wave, as well as the Build-A-Figure Ultron there off to the left. Alright, well that's the packaging. Let's say we get Ant-Man out of the box and see what he's all about. Alright, Toy fans, so here we have Ant-Man out of the packaging, and overall, I do like this figure quite a bit, but I've got some nitpicks about it as well. The first thing I should mention is that this figure is entirely an original sculpt, which is really nice. Granted, they kind of had to do that because he's based off a movie, they couldn't really reuse pieces, but I'm glad to see that he does have all completely original sculpted pieces. And we'll start by taking a look at that head. I don't know if that's really Paul Rudd's likeness. I guess it is. Um, I don't know that there's enough of the face there to judge, but I do like the way that the head is sculpted overall. Lots of dry brushing here and paint detail with the red here on the sides. And as you flip the head around here, all sort of this painted detail going back and lots of sculpted lines in this head. I really like the way that that looks. Now I do want to note that the eyes and all the marketing for Ant-Man that I've seen, the eyes are definitely red lenses. And with this Ant-Man Marvel Legends figure, they've chosen to paint the eyes orange. I find that kind of interesting. Maybe that relates to the movie somehow. I guess we'll have to wait and see. But it's worth noting that it doesn't seem con or consistent with the other sort of marketing material out there. As we move down the figure here, you're going to see that there's some more painted detail. Lots of pipe work sculpted into this figure here. Uh, nice sort of red paint here on the chest. It looks like they may have, could have used another coat there on the chest just to kind of give that a little more pop. But overall, it does look really good. As you come down the figure here, there's some nice uh, paint work here on the belt. Typically, Marvel Legends belts are actually just not painted at all. So I'm glad to see that there's lots of sort of uh, dry brush on this as well. And as you come down the figure here, you're going to see that he does have some pretty flat painted legs. Uh, one thing I noticed here on the leg is that this sort of paint stripe seems to be consistent with how the Avengers costumes at large are looking in the movies right now. If you take a look at the Marvel Legends Hulk figure, the Marvel Select Hulk figure, um, I don't have one for comparison, but I'm pretty sure this is sort of a consistent design uh, in the costume. So I think that's kind of interesting to point out there. Coming down here, we have some nice sculpted detail in the knees. And then we have some paint on the back of the figure, and there's even paint on the arms of the figure here. I get more of that dry brush or the black wash here uh, on the figure, so it looks really, really good overall. Now, as far as my nitpicks go, uh, the joint here in the torso is a bit tight, and you'll see here that there's a little bit of a paint nick there on that paint line coming down here on the torso. That wasn't there when he came out of packaging. In fact, it happened when I first actually articulated his uh, diaphragm joint, so... Keep that in mind, uh, your aunt might have the same issue as well. There's some paint rub to be worried about. And then on the foot, the foot actually feels like it's maybe a softer plastic, or maybe the joint in the foot is a softer plastic. So it just feels a little loose or a little soft when you're trying to uh, position the foot. And sometimes you may have a bit of trouble getting him to stand properly the first time you try, just because of that sort of soft plasticky feel, as you can see here. So uh, it's not a big deal. You can reposition him and get him to work, but it's certainly worth noting that you may have to work around with the feet just a little bit uh, to get him the way you want him. Moving on to accessories, you can see that this Ant-Man figure has a ton to offer us. The first thing I want to mention is that he does come with the head for the Age of Ultron Build-A-Figure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set that to the side. Uh, whenever I finish that figure, if I finish him, I'll go ahead and review that Ultron in another video. But then he has this micro figure here of Yellow Jacket. And I think it's actually pretty cool looking. Now, the head does appear to be painted slightly incorrectly. In all the promo images I've seen for Yellow Jacket, his helmet is black with yellow uh, lenses and and highlighting on it, so it is curious to see that they've gone with the silver paint on the head here, but overall, it's a very tiny figure. It looks very, very good. I'm glad that we got some paint applications on there. The only problem with my yellow jacket is that in the package, I guess, he must have been warped or something because he does not stand on his own. So I've seen in other reviews that he is capable of doing that. I've tried, oh, I got lucky. I tried working around with the legs quite a bit here when I first got him out and I couldn't get him to stand, but I'm glad to see that he's standing for the review, so excellent. And then, of course, we have the actual mini Ant-Man figure here, along with this ant. Now, if we go off the Hasbro, or the Hasbro, if we go off the Diamond Select Mini Mates collection for Ant-Man, 
This ant's name is actually Antony, I think. A-N-T, Thunny, basically. So uh, it is sculpted very nicely. It's got some nice gold paint here on the wings. It uh, doesn't articulate at all, but it really doesn't need to. It looks great just kind of any position you want to uh, place him, really. And then we have this micro Ant-Man figure. You can see here, doesn't have as many paint applications as the larger figure, but they do have some nice sculpted detail here on this figure. He's very, very tiny, but we get some red paint there on the chest and then silver on the belt and on the head. So, And then you can take this micro figure and just stick him right here between the head and the neck of the ant. And then you have him in position to just kind of fly around or pose him or really do whatever you want to do with them. But I'm very happy with the range of accessories we're getting with this Ant-Man figure. Moving on to articulation, we can see that this Ant-Man figure does have a head that'll bend down uh, that far, bend back. That far does rotate all the way around. He's got a shoulder joint that rotates all the way around, as well as a hinge to bend his arm out from the body that far, and then a bicep swivel here that rotates all the way around. Double jointed elbows, he does have rotation at the wrist, and then a hinge to bend back and down. It's a little bit hindered by the sculptor on the wrist. We have that uh, hinge joint here at the torso, like I mentioned before, but again, remember to be wary of that paint rub. He has a rotation here at the waist, He's got a hip joint that'll bend forward that far, bend back only to standing position and out from the body that far. Upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, and then of course we have that somewhat weak ankle joint. So it'll bend down this far, forward this far, it'll even have that nice Hasbro ankle pivot, but it is just a bit of a softer plastic, so positioning him and posing him may be just a bit difficult on first try. Height-wise, we can see that this Ant-Man figure does stand right about six and a quarter inches tall. For some size comparison, here we have movie Ant-Man compared to the Marvel Legends Yellow Jacket figure. And here he is compared to the stealth suit Captain America figure from Captain America the Winter Soldier. And film fans, I don't know if Paul Rudd or Chris Evans are taller. I'm going to guess Chris. So scale may be a bit off with these figures. But let me know in the comments below if you guys actually know. And just for fun, I think it's cool to note that adding this movie Ant-Man figure to our collections puts us one step closer to having a movie version of the Secret Avengers. Yeah, I know, Kelsey Grammer Beast will never appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but we can dream, right? And finally, here he is compared to the 6-inch scale Marvel Legends Infinite Series Wolverine. Alright, toy fans, well that's my review of the Marvel Legends Infinite Series movie Ant-Man figure released by Hasbro in 2015. Overall, I do like the look of this figure, but he definitely has some drawbacks with the weak ankles and with the paint rub on the torso. In fact, as I've been posing him for the pictures at the end of this review, I've been having more and more trouble with those ankles, so definitely keep that in mind. But the accessories with this guy are absolutely fantastic and should not be overlooked. Ultimately, your opinion of this figure is going to depend on your opinion of the movie Ant-Man. And having not seen it yet, I can't tell you whether or not that's worth picking up the figure. So you'll have to make that decision for yourself. But if you're a completionist like I am, you definitely want to add this figure to your collection. Otherwise, you might go ahead and give this guy a pass. Well, thanks for watching this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like what you saw here, please feel free to rate, share, subscribe. Also, be sure to hit me up on Twitter at D21Beast and Instagram at D21Beast. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.